What's up, y'all? It's Patrick. In this practice today, we're going to explore some heart opening, some back bending. Should help you feel good even if you don't go into very many of the deeper positions. Don't worry about it. Just be part of your own practice, your own experience, and enjoy the journey. Let's start by closing our eyes. Find a seat. Just take a few moments here. Let the seat be as upright as possible so you feel the chest lifted. You feel a little bit broad through the collarbones. And try and breathe through your entire diaphragm. Let your inhales be expansive. Let your exhales drop you in. It gives your inhales the opportunity to help you rebound, to help you lift out, and to help you create some space. See if you can let your energy settle for just a few moments here before we begin the journey of expansion. Wherever you are, go ahead and blink the eyes open and come on to hands and knees. If you have a block available, we will use it a bit in this practice, but there's nothing that is requiring a block. It's just that you could potentially use it. And as you get here onto your hands, go ahead and feel your ability to circle the shoulders on top of the wrists as usual. Try to play the spine a little bit more actively here. So you're creating a good energy to moving the spine around. Maybe you're sitting the hips a little bit back. Maybe you're leaning the heart a little bit forward. Try and create a wave of energy, a shift through your physicality. And go ahead and push into the palms as you find your way onto your more classical cat cow setup. Go ahead and tuck the toes. We've done this a few times in these classes before. All I want you to do is lift the knees off the floor slightly, and then we'll take our cat cows from here. So inhale, pull the heart forward, open the chest. On the exhale, round into the upper back body. Keep the knees hovering. Inhale, pull the heart forward, open. Exhale, round in. Inhale, pull the heart forward, open. See if this helps you engage the core. Exhale, round in. And engage the core, not directly on the journey forward, just in general. Inhale, forward. Exhale, round in. Inhale, forward. Exhale, round in. Inhale, forward. Exhale, round in. Inhale to neutral. Lower the knees down. Have the toes tucked or untucked, sit back to the heels. If you have a block, take it with you, hold the block and just lean it over your head. If you don't have the block, hook your thumbs and just pulse them slightly back. So it's as if you're wrapping the pinkies forward and you're just pulsing the hands behind you a little bit. Feel as though it's helping you warm up the shoulders. And again, if you have the block, it's just a subtle amount of weight into the exact same action. Try and breathe a little bit taller, straighten the arms a little bit more. Have the biceps grazing your ears. These little shoulder pulses. Little shoulder pulses. Opening through the front body, opening through the shoulders, creating a good amount of energy. And as you notice, especially if you have the block, this warms you up quite quickly. If you don't have a block, but you want to use an object, really a book, you know, a can of beans, a can of soup, anything that you have here that has a decent amount of weight to it, you know, nothing too serious, but something that kind of helps you create some movement. Go ahead and finish there on your next exhale, and then place your hands down at the top of the mat and journey into your downward facing dog. Of course, if you need to tap the feet a few times there, before you find your downward facing dog, feel free. As you get to your down dog, adjust your stance as you need to, and then feel your ability to push through the hands and kind of wave a good amount of energy through the spine. Really continuing to open 
through the front body and we want to do this in a very dynamic way so it's not just a straight forwards and backwards motion we really want to feel the side waist side body helping us create that space so from here go ahead and lift heels bend knees roll to the outer edge of the right foot the inner edge of the left foot bend the knees and pull the hips up and away drive through the right thumb feel the right hip scooping underneath you and then on your inhale roll forward towards your side plank pose. You can keep the left fingertips down. I really just want you to feel your side body opening. Bend the knees, push your hips back in space. We're gonna move through this a few more times. Inhale, roll forward towards your side plank pose. Bend the knees, pull the hips back in space. Inhale, roll forward towards your side plank pose. Bend the knees, roll back in space. Rise onto your toes and switch sides. And you notice there, I never let my left hand leave the floor, and I also won't let my right hand leave the floor on this side. So bend the knees, grip the fingers, roll forward towards your side plank. Really move through the side body here. And then bend the knees, pull the hips up and back in space. Inhale, roll forward towards your side plank pose. Bend the knees, pull the body back in space. One more time here, inhale, roll forward, squeeze the side body, peel the right shoulder up, and then bend the knees, roll back in space, square everything off. Take an inhale here, tilt the tailbone up to the sky, on the exhale, lower the knees towards the floor. Coming down towards a puppy dog pose, so you can drop the chest towards the floor a little bit here. Your hands can be grounded onto the mat. And just try to breathe through the spine, finding some length. One of the things I like to think about here quite often is my, um, as I'm creating a ski slope through my spine, like a ski jump. And I don't know, really know anything about mountaineering or skiing in general, but thinking about that large slope through the spine. It's an easy visual to create, being curious with your postures, with your breath, and with your setups. Allow the forearms to drop to the floor. Pull the body forward, coming into your sphinx pose. Let the forearms be heavy. Let the hips be heavy, and that will allow the shoulders to feel light. Feel as though you're gradually pulling the body forward and have a little bit of weight in the feet. Feel long through the spine. Feel upright in your setup. Heavy in the hands. Drive the tops of the feet down. Lift the lower belly. On your exhale, release, lower down. Set your fingertips up, oscillating cobra pulse. Inhale, rise and lift. Exhale, folds. Inhale, rise and lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise and lift. Exhale, fold. Last one here, inhale, rise and lift. Exhale, fold. Set yourself up for locust pose. So reach your hands back towards your feet. Squeeze the shoulders onto the back body. Lift the heart, lift the lower belly. Lift the feet off the ground. Reach through the fingers. See if you can find that floating action. Lift the knees. Lift the fronts of the legs, holding here for four, three. It's not going to be too intense, two. On one, bring hands in front of shoulders, point the toes back, push through the palms, find your way into upward facing dog, opening the heart. See if you can lengthen through the front hips just a little bit more, grip through the fingers. On your exhale, lift the lower belly, engage your core so the hips come to the height of plank pose, and then lower all the way down to the ground. We'll take them one more round just like that. So try to get a little bit longer in your setup, Locust pose, inhale, rise, lift the shoulders, squeeze them onto the back body, lift the feet, inhale, open the chest, open the front body, bring your hands in front of your shoulders, place the palms on the floor on your exhale, on your next inhale, push into the hands, lift the chest up and away, opening the heart, breathing in here, creating a little bit more space. Push the tops of the feet down. On your exhale, lift the hips to the height of your plank pose. And then on your exhale, lower all the way back down to 
the floor. As you get there, push, or tuck the toes, excuse me. Lift the knees off the ground, integrating the front body. We're gonna rise into our plank pose. So again, you can do that from your knees or you can do that just as you normally would. Take the inhale to prepare. On the exhale, rise up to plank and then drop knees and forearms to the floor. Spine's very active and available. On the inhale, pull the body through into your upward facing dog and exhale, roll back downward facing dog. Hope your spine, your back body is starting to feel much more alive, much more activated. Inhale, lift the right leg up to the sky. On the exhale, step the right foot up to the right thumb. As it lands, lower your left knee to the floor. Anjane Asana, inhale, reach your hands up, open through the front body. Stretch the fingers behind you. Take a second inhale here. Try and lift up and get a little bit taller. On your exhale, hands to the floor. Step back, downward, facing dog. Inhale, the left leg lifts. On the exhale, left foot to left thumb. Wave the body forward, let the left foot land. Lower the right knee down. Inhale, reach the arms up, open through the front body. Linger here for a moment. Take your second inhale and lift the chest up a little bit more. Create a longer, more elevated space. On your exhale, hands to the floor. Step back into your downward facing dog. Bend knees and elbows, look forward. Inhale, pull the body through into your upward facing dog, opening the heart. On your exhale, roll back downward. Facing dog, lifting the hips up towards the sky. Inhale, lift the right leg up. On the exhale, step the right foot to the right thumb. Exact same work here. Be really mindful each step of the way. Lower the left knee down. Inhale, reach the arms up. Take a moment to set up the position. And on your next inhale, explore your new space. Let yourself linger in the pause. On the exhale, hands to the floor. Step back to your downward facing dog. Inhale, the left leg lifts. On the exhale, left foot up to left thumb. Really flex through the spine to create a, lot, a nice soft landing for the left foot. Inhale, reach the hands up. Open the heart. Create more space there. Use your next breath to inhale. Open and reach through the fingertips. Lifting, elevating, breathing into your more expansive space. On your exhale, hands to the floor. Step back into your downward facing dog. As you find a home in your down dog, lift heels, bend knees, bend elbows, pull the body through into upward facing dog, lifting through the chest, gripping through the fingers. On the exhale, roll back, downward facing dog. Exact same work here. We'll just add on a little bit more to it. Inhale, lift the right leg up. On the exhale, step the right foot to the right thumb as it lands. Lower the left knee down. Inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. Again, give yourself the opportunity to linger in this breath. Inhale, reach the hands up and overhead. Allow the bottom tips of the shoulder blades to pick up the heart. See if you can feel as though more breath is available for you here. On the exhale, hands find the floor. Three-legged dog as you lift the right leg up and back. From here, begin to push into the left hand. Keep the right leg as lifted as possible. Roll to the outer edge of the left foot. Anchor into the left foot. Wrap the left shoulder onto the back and feel as though you're spinning your left hip up towards the sky. If the right heel finds a home on the floor, cool. Push down into it behind the left heel and reach the right arm up and overhead. Breathe into your left shoulder. Breathe into your right lung. So feel as though the breath is ricocheting off the, bo uh, the left rib cage and filling the right lung. On the exhale, close everything off. Downward facing dog. Inhale, the left leg lifts. On the exhale, left foot to left thumb. Let it land. Lower the right knee down. Inhale, reach the arms up towards the sky. 
Begin to notice what's possible for you here as we repeat these movements, as we explore space in a more repetitious manner today. Notice how your body gets more accustomed to it. It gets more comfortable. Things become more available. On your exhale, hands to the floor. Three-legged dog. The left leg lifts all the way up and back. Keep the left leg long and straight. Feel a gentle bend in the right knee so the hip is stable. And then roll to the outer edge of the right foot. Begin to really anchor down through the outer edge of the right foot. Reach your left hand up towards the sky. So you're playing your line of side plank. Your left leg is straight, chasing the ground behind you. If your left heel finds the floor beautiful, keep wrapping the right shoulder onto the back and scoop the right hip up towards the sky. Longer through the left arm, lifting through the right hip, breathing here. Try and hold your space, fight the good fight here. You can always modify the position with the knee down. On your exhale, close. Everything off, downward. Facing dog. Bend elbows and knees, look forward. Inhale, pull the body through. Let the chest lead the way as you lengthen forward, lifting through the front body. And exhale, roll back into your downward facing dog. As you find downward facing dog, last full round here, inhale the right leg lifts. On the exhale, right foot lunges forward to find the right thumb. The left knee lands gracefully and you inhale, open the front body. This time as the hands touch overhead, on the exhale, pull the elbows down towards the hips. Feel as though you're drawing a picture with your hands. On your inhale, reach the hands up above the head. Allow the chest or the collarbones to lead the way. The gaze follows. On your exhale, hands to the floor. Three-legged dog. The right leg lifts all the way up and back, stretching through the right foot. Roll towards the outer edge of the left foot. This time, bend the right knee. Let the whole right foot land behind the left leg. Option to shorten the stance with the left foot, opening the heart as you wrap the left shoulder onto the back and drive through the feet, stretching your right hand towards the floor. And of course, you can naturally land the right hand if that feels good to you. But really just come into your own exploration of space here. Maybe you know you can land the hand, you just don't need to yet. On your exhale, close everything off. Downward, facing dog. Inhale, the left leg lifts. On the exhale, left foot all the way up to the left thumb. Let it lunge forward. Let the left toes land gracefully. Lower the right knee down with a sense of ease. Inhale, reach the hands up above the head, opening the heart, reaching through the fingertips. Let yourself lift up just a little bit more. On your next exhale, pull the elbows down towards the hips. Feel the chest more open, more available, more vulnerable. On the inhale, reach the arms up above you. Create space. Feel as though the hands are seeking something you currently cannot see. On your exhale, hands to the floor. Let the palms land. Grip your fingers into the mat as you stretch the left foot up and back behind you. As you get there, begin to peel the left hip open as you roll to the outer edge of the right foot. Let the left toes land, and then begin to drive into your left foot and your right foot in order to feel an opening through the side body, through the spine. Stretch your left hand towards the top of the mat, maybe towards the floor. And again, just feel the right shoulder corkscrewing onto the back. Breathe into what's available to you now in this moment. Notice your space, notice your opening. On your exhale, close everything off. As you find your downward facing dog, inhale, wave the spine forward one vertebrae at a time, coming into a little bit of spinal flexion to strengthen the core, to reintegrate the shape, just in case you feel a bit unstable in the process of opening. That happens, it's okay. Grip the fingers a little bit more here on the exhale, lower the knees to the floor. Lower the forearms to the floor, look forward. Inhale, pull the body through into your upward facing dog, leading with the chest. 
On your exhale, bend the knees slightly as you roll over the toes. Lead towards your downward facing dog with the tailbone as long as possible. Once you get to your greatest depth in the position, again, inhale, wave forward as slowly as you can. Feel as though you're taking your time, right? It's that dramatic moment in a movie. Once you find your plank pose, take the inhale. On the exhale, lower the knees, lower the forearms. Look forward. And then again, let this journey also be the slow motion. Again, that dramatic part in the movie, maybe where the two main characters see each other for the first time, they lock eyes. Allow yourself to find that con connected wave of energy flowing you into your upward facing dock. Every piece of the movement connected, mindful, intentional. Exhale, roll back downward, facing dog. Push into the palms here. Look long, lift heels, bend knees. Bottom of exhale, step or float feet all the way to the hands. As you get there, rise onto the toes, lower the knees all the way to the floor. Sitting on the heels, again, locate your block or hook your thumbs and just find this little bouncing action that we found before. I want you to feel that your arms are long and strong and straight, though, so you're really creating activity. You don't want the elbows to be bent. You want to feel a lift through the front body. Be open, honest, and transparent with yourself in this action as much as possible. Feel a new opportunity, a new position as you begin to open yourself up more and more. Be here for five, four, three, two, on one, release. Set the block off to the side, cross the ankles, come all the way through onto your butt, and set yourself up for bridge pose. Let the fingertips touch the backs of your Achilles tendons, drive the heels down, and then lift the hips up. And don't worry about the position just yet. Just feel the ability to drive through the feet and lift the hips up. And then from here, you can scoot the shoulders underneath. So that would be another phase of adjusting the position. And then from here, you can begin to pull the shins back. Feel that pull coming from the big toes through the lifted arches through the inner ankles through the inner line of the shin, the inner line of the knee, helping you elevate the spine and drive through the hips. Exhale, release. We're gonna take one more like that. I really want you to focus on that chain of activation. If you had two blocks and you wanted to put a block under each foot, feel free. But again, none of that's required here. Just work with what you have. So the first thing I want you to do is push the heels down. Drive the hips straight up. Drive the hips straight up. So phase one, feel the hamstrings, the glutes actively supporting you. Feel the knees in line with hips, in line with ankles. Now from here, scoot the shoulders underneath the body a little bit more. So the shoulders are trying to meet one another. Then begin to push the forearms down slightly so you feel the chest lifting up towards the chin and the chin lifting slightly away from the chest. Then begin to pull the shins back underneath you, right? But do so from the big toe, right? From the inner lifting arch of the feet, from the inner ankles, inner shins, inner knees. Let that move into the hips, let that move into the spine. Exhale, release. Let your body rest for a moment. Keep the feet where they are. Keep the shoulders where they are. Take a few breaths. We're going to take two more back bends here. So we're going to work on bridge pose or wheel pose. 
right? Body's very prepared to make these movements. Place hands, place feet. Inhale, rise up, lift up. Set yourself up and then let your energy flow. You can always shorten the stance if you want. But more importantly, you can feel the energy from the feet and from the hands lifting into your back body in a very balanced way. Notice all the space you have to open in the front. Feel the shins pulling underneath you. Feel the tailbone tucking under slightly so you can drive through the feet to lift the hips. Inhale into the chest. And exhale, lower all the way down. Let yourself rest for a moment. If you're taking wheel with me this last round, we will take kind of a double round here. So what that'll look like is we'll rise into the wheel pose, and then we'll take a few breaths there, then we'll lower the forehead to the floor, and then we'll rise back up into the wheel pose. All right, this is a great way to really help put your shoulders in the proper position, build strength, I'll build stamina for your wheel pose, but also get a little bit more of an opening through the front body. And if it goes really swell, we might just take an extra round. So place the hands, place the feet, rise into your wheel pose, starting from the legs, let that energy transition into the hands, lifting up a little bit more, Opening up a little bit more. Take a few breaths here. It really feels like you're wrapping the triceps towards the back line of your mat, but still pushing through the thumbs. Let the drive be as important as the wrap. And again, you could hold right here, or if you're going to lower the forehead down, feel free to bend the elbows, trying to keep the heels grounded. Lower the forehead to touch. Lift the shoulders away from the floor, and then rise into your wheel pulse. Lift up just a little more here. Breathe just a little bit easier, even if it's challenging. Allow yourself to get comfortable being in a challenging space. Of course, don't hurt, don't, you don't want to feel pain at all, but it's okay if your legs feel tired. It's okay if your arms feel tired. Slowly lower the body all the way down. Let yourself open. Rest for a second. Try to not adjust the legs. We're going to take one more round here. So if you've yet to try wheel, one thing you could do is rise up onto the skull. I'll in fact demonstrate that for this first portion. And we will work the forehead drop one more time. It'll be our last pose of effort in the practice today. So set yourself up. Place hands and feet. And if you're brand new to Ordva Dhanurasana, if you're, if you're comfortable with it, by all means, go do your thing. If you're newer to it, I want you to rise onto the top of the head. And then from here, just try and lift the shoulders up. And just try and take weight off the head so you don't feel pressure on the head. It feels like you're lifting the hips up. You're creating the arch in the spine. And you just want to feel no pressure on the head. You're pushing into the hands. Maybe you can lift the head slightly. Maybe you can straighten the arms all the way. feel longer through the front body, even as you potentially shorten your stance. Option to lower the forehead all the way to the floor. If you do that, rise back up. Hopefully you feel more space, more lift. And exhale lower all the way down. Let your arms open up like a T. Wiggle your feet wide. Let your knees knock middle. Hmm. Take a few deep breaths here. That is a lot. Feel all the energy thriving in your physical body. Running from the tips of the toes to the tips of the fingers. Running through each vertebrae of the spine. Running through the rib cage. Running through the mind. And then use your breath to find a steadiness. 
to bring you back into this moment. Keep using your imagination to create your visuals, to create your experience. To close off the practice today, bring the right knee into the chest, give it a squeeze. Take a few moments here. Your left leg can be long and straight if you want. Or of course, you can have it slightly bent. From here, you can straighten the right leg by catching the right big toe or interlacing the hands behind the right hamstring. And it doesn't need to be very intense. Even if you have a big amount of flexibility in your body and the hamstring, you can always interlace the hands behind the leg here because what we're really trying to do is just counter. When we do our back bends properly, you should feel a lot of the work in the legs. And so this is just designed to bring us some ease and a sense of calm. Slowly release the right foot, set it down. Bring the left knee into the chest. Let the left knee trace towards the left shoulder. Try and keep the pelvis neutral so even as the left knee lifts, it's as if you want the tailbone to be chasing the top of the mat or the outer left hip to be reaching towards the top left corner. And then from here, feel free to straighten your left leg, any capacity. Find the easiest position for you. Find the easiest position. And release. Set the feet down. You could let the big toes push together and the knees splay open. Supta Baddha Konasana to close your practice. You could also let the legs just go long. When you're in some of these challenging positions, it can be really tough to let go or give yourself the opportunity to breathe or the opportunity to find the softness to your practice. And that's okay, because not every position is designed to have a softer element to it. While you may want to have a kinder mindset towards ourselves, a kinder mindset towards our efforts, some positions inherently are always going to be challenging. But this closing position, this soft, steady place of being, it doesn't need to be intense. So let your eyes close. Let the intensity of your breath move away. Feel the gentle fluttering of your heart. Be in frequency with your own essence nature. Feel free to stay here as long as you'd like. As always, thank you all so much for joining me for these practices. I hope to share space with you again soon. Have an amazing rest of your day. Peace.